Grace and peace. God bless you. This is Soteria Prophetic Ministries. I'm your host, Delisa Rogers Fields, and I want to talk to you about a comment that Jesus made. I believe it's in John chapter 4, verse 4, and he made reference to having to go through Samaria. Now, I want to talk about that because um, this was an unusual statement that Jesus made. He had um, previously told the apostles that to not go to Samaria. He sent them out. He gave them uh, specific instructions and uh, specific instructions where to go. And then he also told them where not to go. And so Samaria was one of those places. He said, do not go to Samaria. And the reason why he said that was because Jesus understood that his assignment, his earthly assignment was to gather the lost sheep, the lost flock of Israel. And so he he remained true to his assignment, which is something we all should adhere to is to remain true to your assignment because guess what there are needs everywhere there 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 are needs everywhere but you cannot lose yourself in trying to serve every purpose always remain i tell my sons and daughters on um, this all the time always remain true to your call remain in your lane and so that way you don't overextend yourself you don't um commit your things yourself to things that you aren't graced for. We've seen that, haven't we? We've seen people jump into situations and they find out later than sooner that, oh my goodness, I wasn't ready for it. I didn't see this. I don't know how to get out of it. And so you want to make sure the Bible says to acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways, right? So before you embark upon anything, whatever that thing is, make sure you seek God and make sure you get that permission. You receive that unction and you receive that clearance before you move forward. And so Jesus understood coming to the earth that he had 33 and a half years um, to to accomplish what God sent him here to do, what he was sent here to do. And so he was very strategic in who he aligned himself with and who he, who he disaligned or misaligned and who he uh, connected and disconnected. He was very clear in who he allowed to get close, like intimately close and those he kept close and those he, he kept at a distance. So again, so many lessons that we can learn from the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in John chapter four, verse four, he made a comment. He said, I must needs go through Samaria or in other words, I need to go through Samaria. And so this was an unusual comment because as I stated, he had previously advised and instructed his apostles not to go through Samaria. But for this particular purpose and for this particular um, time in Jesus's ministry, public ministry, he had to go through Samaria. And so I want you to understand this too. He was on his way. Jesus was, he was traveling and Jesus came to the earth poor, right? He didn't come on chariots. He didn't come with horses and, and, and wealth and all of that. I mean, we know his birth story. We know that Joseph is his natural father, foster dad, or however you want to call it, um, passed away before Jesus became a full man. Um, so you can imagine what the financial dynamics look like. And let me just encourage those of you who, who sometimes the enemy will speak against your purpose based upon what your financial, uh, situation is and, and just call the devil a liar. OK, just call him a liar. Praise God, um, because your financial status has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the work that God has called you to and the purpose by which you have been called. So it doesn't matter how many zeros you have in your account, how many commas. It does not matter. Listen, when God has called you to a work, if he has to send people to you or send you to people or send, as I released the word, a dirty bird to provide for you in a season of leanness. God will do it. So don't ever let the devil lie to you. And don't you subscribe to his lies. Cancel. I hear the Lord say, tell my people, cancel the subscription. <laughs> Good God Almighty. That's the word. Cancel that subscription to the lies of the enemy that just because you don't have this and you don't have that, that you are irrelevant, that you're not called, that you're not um, purposed uh, for the kingdom. The devil is a liar. Jesus said the, the birds have air. Birds of the nest. Um, birds of the air have a nest. Foxes have holes, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. He was homeless for the most part. And Jesus walked everywhere he went. 
And so when you think about all of these places that we read in the four Gospels that Jesus went, and that's another word to many of us, I'm talking to me too, <laughs> I need this word, is that, you know, when God calls us or sends us to a place, we do, we look at, okay, how much is this going to cost me? And, you know, I've got to take time off work, I've got to travel, I've got to get a hotel room and book space, all of that. Yeah, I mean, we're in these modern times, and so it takes more to do ministry than in Jesus' day, right? Because what, what what would Jesus do? Jesus pulled up on the shore and told Peter, let me use your boat. And that boat became the platform. He stood on that boat, and he preached, and praise God. So, you know, but we're in modern times now, and so we we need things. We, we So, it, you know, ministry does have an expense to it. And, and so, you know, for that, we're just grateful for those who support the work of the ministry. Um, we, you know, we thank God for those who are partnered and, and, you know, who are, who are faithful because we need it. We, we need it. Praise God. And he, Jesus had to pay bills. He told Peter, go to the um, water, the edge of the water and the fish has the coin in his mouth. So that fish had an assignment to produce that coin. Praise God. So we bless the fish who have coins to serve and support in the kingdom as financiers. Anyway, praise God. Um, and I'm saying that cause I launched a nonprofit and oh my goodness. Um, but that's, we'll talk about that later anyway. So, you know, Jesus, he traveled by foot everywhere. And so when you see how, um, how active he was in ministry, you know, he was here and he was there and he was, you know, he, he did that by foot. So you can imagine going through Samaria and just to give you a little brief historical context, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. They considered the Samaritans outcast. Matter of fact, Jesus referred to the woman as a dog, you know, so they weren't considered, um, you know, uh, First class citizens, for lack of a better word, they were scourged. They were to be avoided at all costs. They were considered to be Gentiles or a blended mixed race. And I mean, you know, we, we can talk about that as African-Americans, if you are like I am. Um, so so there was that discrimination. They were discriminated against. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you a truth. Um, they were discriminated against. And so for Jesus to say, I've got to go there. Right. It, it That alone lets you know that this was something out of the out of the norm it was out of the usual out of his usual path and ways of doing things he had previously told the apostles when he sent them out on assignment he said this is where you go this is where you don't go and Samaria was one of those places where he said do not go so Jesus understood that my assignment is not to the Gentiles it's not y'all season right now Um, I'm sent to the to the house of Israel and, and and he did that work. So for him to say, I've got to go through Samaria, several things were happening. All right. Number one is that it, it would require him uh, a longer transit time. And remember, he's walking by foot. So you talk about in the heat in the Middle East, the desert heat. I just want to put some give you some perspective um, is hot. He's weary. He's tired. He's burdened. Right. Um, he's alone. Because no one else went with him. It was, he said, I have to go through Samaria. So it wasn't for the apostles. And I'm, I'm setting this up because I'm going to help some of you with some of those seasons that you're in. And you're trying to figure out what in the world and why. And God, are you serious? <laughs> um, so he's by himself. Now, another thing I want you to keep in mind is when you're roaming on those back roads, there is a tendency to be robbed. Um, because, you know, people, those roads were less traveled. And so uh, there were a lot of bandits. And, and you think about it like this. If you're trying to avoid the popo <laughs> for my people overseas, if you're trying to avoid law enforcement, you're going to take the back road. Right. You are not. Listen, you are not driving on the interstate with everybody. If you're riding with an expired tag or insurance or God forbid, you've got a warrant, you're under the radar. And so the likelihood of the robbers and bandits taking that back road where Jesus was walking is highly probable. So I want to set this up for you, you guys, because I'm telling you, God is going to bless your whole life with this word today. So you've got Jesus who previously told the apostles not to engage the Samaritans. It's not their time. Samaritans It's not their season. Um, you've got Jesus saying, OK, now, but I need to go. You guys can't go because you're not graced for this assignment. I have to walk it by myself. Um, I am having to walk this by myself. I have no resources. I have no donkey, no horse, no stallion, no chariot. I just have my two feet. I'm hot. I'm tired. I'm burdened and I'm weary and I'm probably in pain, probably sore. Right. Um, And he's having to walk this thing out. And not only that, he's going into Samaria, 
where the people are heathens and idol worshipers. So I, I just want you to understand all of what this looks like. He's on this road. He can be attacked. Of course, we know he wasn't going to be attacked. Come on, y'all. But he was he placed himself in danger. He placed himself in danger. Remember the good Samaritan? Remember that? Guess what? That comes out of this story too, right? So anyway, praise God. This is so good. I love the word of God. You guys have been studying for over 30 years. Um, so Jesus gets there and what does he do? He sits down at a well. Why? Because he's thirsty. <laughs> he wants some water. And so he engages this woman. We know that she's the woman at the well. She's the woman with these five husbands and the one she has is not hers. She's this woman who has been through so much pain and torment and abuse as a matter of fact, I may, um, I was telling you guys that I launched a nonprofit, Barbara's Lighthouse. I named it after my mom, um, a wonderful woman of God who has gone home to be with the Lord, but she left a lot of unfinished work. And so God has blessed me with the ability, along with my children, to raise those works up, to uncover those wells. And so we're just doing a great, great job with that. Anyway, um, but I'm going to do a monologue a little bit later on um, Barbara's Lighthouse podcast. So you guys jump over and and, and, and subscribe to that one too. Anyway, so Jesus gets there because he said, I have to go to Samaria. And the reason why Jesus has to go to Samaria is to meet this woman. Listen to me. He's in pain. He's burdened. He's hungry. He's tired. He's having to journey by himself. However, there is still a ministry assignment. There is a woman who has been broken through life, through relationships. There's a woman who has been battered by her emotions, by her own grief and guilt and and convict and condemnations but god is leading jesus the 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 glory in jesus is leading him to go through despite his pain despite his turmoil despite his anguish despite him putting his life in jeopardy god is driving him the god in him the god man okay is driving him to get to samaria and when he gets there he almost collapses at the well that's where he just ran out of his umph OK, and he's there, but he's waiting and the woman shows up on time and she they begin to have dialogue, which I won't get into that because you should know the story. If not, I encourage you to look it up and they have dialogue. And guess what? The purpose by, for which Jesus had to go through Samaria was accomplished. Now, I want to leave you with this thought. There are many of us who are in seasons of pain, seasons of anguish, seasons of conflict, seasons of leanness, seasons of vulnerability, seasons of danger because we're in a pandemic. Uh, you know, every time I step in and minister to somebody, you, you put yourself at risk. So I, I, I wanted to pull this out because in the face of each of those obstacles and, and barriers and uh, you know, things that were in Jesus's way, he pressed through it to get to that woman. And I'm here to tell you today that God wants you to continue to press because there are people. There may be one person. Jesus did all of that for one person, one woman. But guess what? When he finished ministering to her, this woman received a, a, an evangelistic mantle. She received deliverance, breakthrough, healing. And that woman went back and said, everybody come out and see a man who told me everything, uh, told me everything about my life. So there are people and you may think, oh, I'm only ministering to this one person. But you have no idea the souls who are connected to that one person, that one lady. Now, some some would have said and I've heard it because I travel a lot and I've been around and I know a lot. Don't know everything. Praise God. But some will say, well, I'm not going there because there's not enough people there. Oh, I'm not going to do that because it's only one person. It's not worth my time. <laughs> it's not worth my. Get. There, there have been times uh, down through the years that God has led me to um, establish like Bible studies and workshops and things in rural areas where I had to pay my way. It wasn't a church. These churches. Listen, it wasn't a church bringing me in. There was a need. People would reach out to me and say, woman of God, you know, I'm I live in X, Y, Z and I would love to be under your ministry. I would love to be connected. I would love for you to come and minister. If you come, I'll bring my family. I bring, And, you know, and I would say, you know what? Let me pray about it and let me get back with you. And the next thing I know, the Lord is like, go. 
And so it's sort of like Jesus was traveling that road to Samaria, right? And you and listen, you can't take a whole lot of people with you because you, you're funding this. You are funding it yourself. And, and when you get there, like Apostle Paul, and that's apostolic work, people of God. I mean, I don't want you guys to, you know, when people see the apostles, you know, I don't know. Some people think there's a lot of money attached to it. Now, there are some apostles who are surrounded by financiers and there are people who have, I mean, God is blessing them and I bless God for that. Listen, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you go ahead and be great. But then there are others who have to work like Apostle Paul and who have to labor, make their own tents. And they're connected with other other apostles who are tent makers as well. So I, I don't want you to get that. You know, don't don't like my apostles say, don't get it twisted. Not every apostle has churches who are sowing and giving and funding and sending. No, that's not the case. Always. There are some apostles who will put their own, who will work and who will sow their own way just to minister to the woman at the well. Right. And I'm one of those by the grace of God. But, you know, so there have been times when God has said, I need you to go here. I need you to go there. And I would do it. And the people would come and you talk about ministry. Wow. And they would give offerings and so forth. And I mean, you know, praise God. Sometimes it's sufficient. Sometimes it's not. But, you know, God makes up the difference. And that's at the end of, at the, end of the day. That's what Jesus told them. He said, don't take personal script. I'll provide for you. And so we don't really know what that provision looks like. We just trust God and we go and get the work done. But when Jesus did that, Jesus went to Samaria. He didn't go to be uh, ministered to. He went to minister. He went to serve as weary as he was. And here he is collapsed almost at the well. And I'm um, sorry, I was looking at my dog. And um, and and so he he he's at this woman's mercy. You know, he said, hey, give me something to drink. Give me something to drink. And so, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just checking my dog, making sure he's, it looks like he's limping, praise God. Um, he says, Give me, so you all know the conversation, right? If not, please go back and read it and look at what happens. But I want you to have, when you read it now, I want you to read it through a fresh lens. I want you to read, don't just read, oh, Jesus met the woman at the well and he told her everything she ever did and, and then she went and preached to the people. I don't want you to, I, I want you to, when you go back and read it this time, I want you to fully embrace Jesus' suffering. Because I want you to understand that when God calls you to do a work, listen, and I'm, I can't tell, tell it to you like I can tell it to you. Sometimes you may be suffering yourself and God is saying, go minister, release, pray. Do, and you're like, really? Like, God, I was doing well yesterday. Why you didn't call me to do this yesterday? All right. <laughs> today I'm broken and I, I just don't know what I'm, where I'm coming to go. And today, God, today is the day you want me to go do this. And so, you know, but we're bought with a price, right? We're not our own, praise God. And so I want you to understand that there will be times, even in your broken, crushing, bruising season, that God is still saying, hey, release the oil. And you're like, I just got, I just got this oil. <laughs> just, <laughs> I need it for me. And God is saying, no, I need you to release. And as you release, I will pour back into you. And so the blessing when Jesus met that woman at the well in the midst of his suffering, listen, his ministry to her refreshed him. It refreshed him to know that my coming here was not in vain. She said, I'm going back and I'm going to tell everybody. And guess what? She brought everybody back. Now, you know what? I promise you. Now, this is not recording in scripture, recorded. But I guarantee you those people blessed him. However, I'm sure they fed him. I'm sure somebody gave him whatever he needed. They didn't just come and just listen and walk away. No, there was an anointing on there. Was, that was a solemn assembly. That was a clarion call. That not only ministered to that woman, to her, her heritage, but also to her people and also to Jesus. It also ministered to. Him. So sometimes, you know, you can take on the selfish mindset to where, well, Lord, I'm get, I'm going through something. I'm dealing with it. Oh, I don't have it. But your blessing is in being a blessing, even when you don't feel like you got a blessing to bless anybody with. There is more blessed to give than to receive. And, and that's something that, you know, if you, if you don't remember anything and you don't have any takeaways from my talk today, I want you to understand it's more blessed to give. And many times the giving, the, the giving that brings the blessing is a giving that hurts. And that, that was the issue that God had with Cain and Abel. God wants to, is there blood on your giving? Is there a sacrifice? Is it a sacrificial giving or is it just here? Here's the, here's it here, God. 
You know, you're just giving out of your abundance. No. Are you giving out of a season when you really need somebody to give to you, but you understand that the need that is presented to you is greater than your own? Or can you see beyond you and see somebody else? And that's where the hand of God is released. So a lot of people are asking God, bless me, bless me, bless me. But you've got to, you've got to uh, qualify. You got to, you know, you got to put that work in. Praise God. So I want to leave that thought with you that, um, you know, those of you who are on that road to Samaria right now and, and you're just kind of journeying through and there are a lot of things that you're facing and you're going through. I'm on my road to Samaria right now. Just to be transparent with you. And God is still saying, uh, keep going, <laughs> you know, keep going. Um, yeah, because I still need this. There are still things I need you to do. All right. I know that you're in situations and you're facing things, but, you know, I'll get you through that. You continue to do what I called you to do. And that's where the blessing is. That's where the refreshing comes from. I, I can't I'm telling you, I can't express it to you like I want you to get it. The refreshing comes from the presence of God. But that refreshing comes from the presence of God when you obey what God says. When you when he when you do what he tells you to do. All right. So listen, uh, this message has been um, it blessed me. <laughs> Praise God. So it is my prayer uh, that, you know, this word has encouraged those of you that that are on you on your Samaritan Samarian um, on your way to Samaria. You know, you're on your way to minister to Samaritans, you know, whatever that looks like for you. But I want you to be encouraged that um, God can still bless. God can still deliver. God can still heal. Just keep moving forward. OK, continue to press. Cont I know things are rough right now on so many areas on, and on so many levels. I know that I, I'm, I'm touched with the same problems you touch with. All right. Um, Jesus, the Bible said, was tempted in all points. So he understands. We have a high priest who understands what we go through. He does. Uh, and, and so that's why we can go to him and say, Lord, I love you. I, I, I want to obey you, but it's hard right now. Go to him and talk to him about the things that you're dealing with and the things that you're being um, uh, presented with and let him strengthen you. Let him encourage you. But also go back and read that Samaritan, the woman at the well, read that story and then look at it through another set. The lenses um, that I have opened here for you, this portal of understanding that I've opened for you, look at it again and then put your plug yourself in there and see where you fit into that narrative. Amen. Those of you that desire to sow into this ministry or the word, amen, you may do so. My cash app is Delisa R Fields. You'll see once you put it in, you'll see my my face. I've got like a black checkered thing on. Um, I have I'm doing a lot of work with my websites right now. So you won't I think I've taken them down to do some um some construction work. But you can always cash app. Um, praise God or hit me up. You miss most of you have my um, contact information on Soteria Prophetic Ministry. Hit me up. Praise God and say, woman of God, I just want to be a blessing um, to the ministry. You have poured out. You you bless us. You don't hold anything back. I want you to be a blessing. Also, 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 I have launched my nonprofit, Barbara's Lighthouse. It's on Facebook. The website is up Barbara's Lighthouse dot com. And we are right now in the process of renovations. Um, and I've spent out of my own personal economy um, close to about six hundred dollars um, cash. And I also have some don some um, donation requests coming in. We've got some families that are looking for some help um, for some furniture and some other household items. And so I'm always looking for partners. My um, 501c3 status is pending. I fully expect it to be released by the end of the year. So those donations to Barbara's Lighthouse are tax deductible. The donations to my ministry is tax deductible too. So either way, you'll receive a letter just thanking you for your contribution and you can use that if you itemize um, or you can just have it just to say, Lord, I think that I'm being a partner with the woman of God who has a heart for your people. So uh, until next time, you guys be safe out there. Mask up, keep your hands clean, keep your heart clean too. Praise God. We love you and we'll see you uh, next time here at uh, uh, Soteria Prophetic Ministries. God bless you.